Okay, the last heteroaromatic we're going to look at is a thiazole. And thiazole is going to be a bit different. So just to warn you, um, we're not going to do things exactly the same way. So what is thiazole? Thiazole is a five-membered ring. It has a sulfur and nitrogen in the ring, and they're in a 1-3 position relative to one another. And we're not going to emphasize the imine between carbon 2 and 3. We're actually going to emphasize this bond. And we're going to call this an enamine. And so if we pull this apart, thinking of that as an enamine, we need a carbonyl. And that's going to free up an NH right there. That's our first disconnection. Our set, second disconnection is going to be right here. It's this carbon-sulfur bond. And actually, carbon-sulfur bonds are easy to make through an SN2 reaction. So if we had a leaving group on that carbon, and I just put X for some generic leaving group, and we could react it with something that looks like this. We could put this together. The sulfur would attack, kick out the halide, and then the nitrogen would in turn attack the carbonyl. Now, as it turns out, this particular structure, this weird sulfur nitrogen compound, doesn't really exist like this, uh, like it's drawn. That is a, a tautomer of that. And it actually looks like this. This is a thioamide. So what we're really going to start with to do this chemistry, we need a thioamide to do these reactions. And we need an alpha halo carbonyl. And we've learned how to do alpha halogenations of carbonyl compounds. So that is no problem making this, this molecule. Let's see a real example. And... Um, Let's see an example that's very much like a reaction that we ran in lab. In fact, it is the reaction that we ran in lab. We took this alpha halo carbonyl and we reacted it with a thioamide. Now, it was kind of a fancy thioamide. It was actually called thiourea, but it still contained this basic functional group we just had, instead of an, a regular R group, we had an amine on there. It turns out this is a very stable, inexpensive source of a thioamide. So what did we do? We simply mix these up in methanol. The sulfur, great nucleophile, it attacked. And that happened, that's the first step. Oops, that's NH2. We have to do, um, uh, you know, I can't erase on this thing. Let, uh, let me stick in these hydrogens explicitly. So some base in here could be our solvent. We'll deprotonate one of these hydrogens next door. Now this structure start re starts to resemble this top middle structure where you have with the sulfur single bond and double bond to nitrogen. This nitrogen finds a way to wrap around and attack that. I'm going to draw it. I'm not going to draw out all the steps, but through multiple steps, we'll end up losing water. Doing, you know, we need to make a pi bond. So how do you make pi bonds? We do an elimination. What did we eliminate? Well, we eliminated water. Um, and we end up getting to, um, to this final structure. <clears throat> so this is, uh, these are actually great reactions. We ran one in the lab. We got a high yield of this thiazole product. And this is just yet another example of how we can take really small pieces and stitch them together to make interesting cyclic structures that actually often are used in the drug industry. So that's part of the driving force behind this chemistry.